in the National Football League. Tennessee Titans 33, Jacksonville Jaguars 30. As once again, in the 52nd meeting between these rivals, the Titans get it done again. On this edition of Titans All Access, we've got some celebrating to do. The Titans are 2-0 for the first time in 12 years after besting Jacksonville. Coach Mack is on track to show you Janu making the moves. We are all celebrating the return of SEC football this weekend. That includes a large number of Titans who played in the SEC. Rashawn Evans speaks for the group, explaining why Southeastern Conference football just means more. And we celebrate the arrival of fall with a trip to Minneapolis. General Manager John Robinson gets us ready for the Titans and Vikings. Celebrate good times. Titans all access. Come on. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you joining us to talk about the 2-0 Tennessee Titans. Woohoo! 2-0 for the first time in 12 years. Feels good. Feels a little different. It does. It feels nice. I like this winning thing. Yeah. I'm into it. All right, so we're going to change up the show just a little bit. Since the Titans have changed up our sort of script with the 2-0 start, we're going to start with Coach Dave McGinnis and play number one as we go into Microsoft's Beneath the Surface. It's a remix. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. This week, we're going to look at the great connection between quarterback Ryan Tannehill and tight end John U. Smith. Very, very instrumental with two touchdowns in this game. Very, very critical to the Titans' victory. First play we've got here is the first play from scrimmage. Todd Wash, the defensive coordinator for Jacksonville, is geared to stop Derrick Henry. This is an eight-man front. The safety, number 29, Josh Jones, he has Jonu Smith man-to-man. -man. Jonu puts his hand on the, on the outside linebacker, draws the attention away from himself as a receiver. The delayed block allows him to get out off of the play action. Josh Jones gets completely lost within this play. He starts to try to move to the middle of the field. John who goes free down the football field. Tremendous pass protection off of the play action protection. Taking advantage of Todd Walsh, the defensive coordinator, stacking the line of scrimmage to try to stop Derrick Henry. Now where we are, we're second nine. The ball is on the plus 13. What we're looking at, this is 11 personnel. The Titans move Janu across the formation into a nine ball stack. Jacksonville is in locked zebra. They're man to man. The point is locked by the man on the point. Wingard has come across with Janu in man to man. So watch everybody clear out to give Janu a lot of space in the middle of this nine ball stack to work the option route on Wingard. Fakes inside, great chemistry between Ryan Tannehill and Janu Smith. He knew Janu was gonna fake inside. A lot of area to work with off of an option route. Throws it, touchdown, Titans. Great start to this football game. Our final play, third and four from the four. Now what Jacksonville's going to be in there in red two. Cover two, but for the red zone version of it, they're gonna have a spider drop. They're gonna rush three men. They're gonna drop eight. Watch the left defensive tackle drop out. He's gonna try to get a jam on him and then be able to let the linebacker pick him up. John who chops, runs through the jam by the defensive tackle, and then powers and runs over the linebacker trying to make a tackle on him. This is a really a good job of recognizing red two in the red zone, knowing that Jonu Smith is going to be able to get away from this spider drop by the defensive tackle. Ryan Tannehill is going to deliver a bullet to him, give him a chance to drop his shoulder, go same foot, same shoulder, run over the linebacker, touchdown, Titans. Two big touchdowns in this game for the Tennessee Titans. Very instrumental in their victory. John Robinson is on deck to give us a preview of this Sunday's opponent, Minnesota. The general manager is next on Titans All Access. It's time for us to preview Sunday's game brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Amy and I welcome Titans general manager, John Robinson. John, glad to have you with us on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mike. 
Now, John, we want to talk about Minnesota, but that's going to wait a second because first we want to talk a little bit about the Jacksonville Jaguars game, just a hair. Um, Adam Humphreys had a great game. What makes him so good at what he does? Well, I think it's it's his approach to, to prepare every single week. He's got the same mindset you know, that he had as a walk-on at Clemson, as a rookie tryout player in Tampa, studying his playbook, trying to get the timing down at practice with the quarterback so that when he goes out there you know, on game days, he can be a dependable target for, you know, for the quarterback and the offense. John, new rule in the NFL this year. On the weekends, you can call up two players from the practice squad to the active roster. Obviously, that worked well in the Jacksonville win with both Cameron Batson and Jeremy McNichols contributing to the offense. This call-up thing from the practice squad working out pretty well for the Titans so far. Yeah, you know, we tell all of these practice squad guys, you know, you, you've got to be uh, prepared uh, to, to get that call up on game day, and especially this year with the rules that we're playing under. But both of those guys have worked extremely hard. Jeremy made, us, uh, made a couple plays for us the week before in the Denver game uh, and then stepped up again, you know, in the Jacksonville game and made some plays for us. And, and then Batson, you know, key, a key run on that speed sweep and a really good catch late in the game on that deep end cut uh, to keep that drive going. Now let's turn to the Minnesota Vikings. What is it about quarterback Kirk Cousins that makes him so dangerous? Well, he's played a lot of football. He's a good athlete. He's got a, he's got a good arm. You know, he, he, he's, he's a smart football player. You know, I think his career completion percentage is around 67%. His career QBR is over 90. He's got a two to one touchdown ratio. So he does a lot of good things uh, offensively. And he's, he's a veteran. He's seen a lot of coverages. He's seen a lot of blitzes. He gets the offense in good positions uh, to move the football. Minnesota has an outstanding running back in Dalvin Cook. When you look at Cook as a weapon, do you really have to start with his versatility? Yeah, I think so. You know, he's certainly you know, much is made about how, you know, how talented a runner he is in their rushing attack. But, you know, they, they use him as a pretty cool chess piece. They move him around, they'll split him out. Uh, they'll throw in the ball. You know, he, he, everybody wants to make mention of the over 1,000 yards he rushed for last year, but he also caught over 50 passes. So they put him in positions to be successful, uh, to make plays for them, both in the running game and in the passing game. Now, John, the Vikings made the divisional round of the NFC playoffs in 2019. They may be 0-2 right now, but the Titans are counting on seeing a playoff caliber team this Sunday in Minneapolis, right? Yeah, this is a talented football team. You know, we just we spoke about all the players that they have. Coach Simmer's a heck of a football coach. Rick Spielman's done a good job of assembling all these guys. It's a road game for us. You know, I know they're going to be fired up to, to play in their stadium um, and get back on track. You know, they, they, they may have got off to a slow start here, but there's a lot of firepower on both sides of the football up there in Minnesota, and we'll have to bring our A game on Sunday. John, congratulations on the 2-0 start, and hopefully we'll be talking about 3-0 next week. That's the plan, Mike. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks very much. John Robinson's preview brought to us by Farm Bureau Insurance. When Amy Wells and I return, it's time for the Nissan Insider. Rashawn Evans on deck on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Lots of football fans excited this weekend because the Titans are 2-0 on their way to Minnesota, and... SEC football's back. <laughs> You're so excited. Yes, I am. How many SEC alums on the Titans roster, Amy Wells? Is that including practice squads? It's everybody. 15. Whoa. You know, I keep track she of my team. She nailed it. Keep track of my team. Every night? Every night. Nicely done. Check them off the list. Well played. Thank you. Speaking of well played, Rashawn Evans. He has played well since high school, college at Alabama, and since he's become a Titan. He's got this whole SEC thing down, and he explains to us in this week's Nissan Insider why SEC players are so ready for Sundays. Titans find Evans, loses the ball. Picked up by Evans. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, end zone. Rashawn Evans, 51 yards. Rashawn, you grew up in Auburn. You played at Alabama. You play professional football now in Nashville, Tennessee. There's nobody better to ask about Southeastern Conference football than you. When your teammates ask you, why is SEC football such a big deal? How do you explain it? Man, I would say it's just the culture, man. Uh, you know, football players who love, truly love football, who were born and raised to play this game, man. 
You know, that's the type of the type of football players you get out of the SEC. Guys that are gritty, who who play with violence. Guys who are extremely athletic. I mean, you got guys who are running sub four 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 fives at 250 pounds. DNs. You know, linebackers, offensive linemen who running four eights and stuff. So, I mean, these are really extremely athletic human beings, man, coming out of the SEC. So, you could definitely see why people rave so much about the SEC. Is there almost a culture among professional football players who played in the SEC like you guys come into the league as part of a fraternity almost? Oh, no doubt. Um, you know, anytime you hear a guy that's from the Southeastern Conference, you know, there's, there's a different type of respect because, you know, those guys come from, you know, a conference where guys are playing some of the, the most elite talent in the NCAA. So, you know, you get that, you know, big man on campus type feel sometimes when you get into the NFL. So when you go into a place like Baltimore for a divisional playoff game, and man, those fans are great in Baltimore. Give them total credit, but You've seen that before traveling around the SEC, haven't you? Oh, no doubt, man. Uh, you know, I was I was playing in an atmosphere like that almost every Saturday, man. I remember Brian Denny Stadium just having all of those fans out there screaming at the top of their lungs, trying to get the quarterback and their audibles, you know, to be as, as difficult as possible, man. And that was probably one of the greatest atmospheres I've been a part of. So it was something that was you know definitely not new to me because it was something that I, I was planning every saturday the sec has dominated the draft in recent years in terms of putting players in the national football league what's the one attribute that sticks out to you the most that you felt like translated well from your sec days to the nfl um man, i would just say my speed man i think that's the the number one thing a lot of guys, you know, from the South is, is our speed, man, and, you know, speed kills. Anytime you can use that in your game and being able to get off the ball and be able to make plays like that, you're going to make a lot of those plays in the NFL. Now, see, we're friends now. We've known each other a while. You know, I, I love you. I love what you do. So I, I got to ask you, is the story about you running against horses when you were in high school or growing up or whenever it was, is, is that actually true? Yeah, that's actually true. Um, my brother, he was the one that kind of brought it to me. He was the one that, uh, you know, that was doing it at first. Um, he's an animal type guy, so he loves horses, loves, you know, different types of animals. So, you know, for him, you know, doing crazy stuff like that, that's that's in the norm. And I remember him telling me, he was like, yeah, why don't you just trace horses and use it in, you know, some of your workouts. And I actually did it. And uh, I did it like a couple times, you know, early on, especially in high school, a lot of time before I even went to Alabama. I did it a couple times. And you know, I feel like it was probably one of the most craziest experiences because, you know, they're, they're you know, high power type animals. You know, you get used to seeing that type of speed. Once you see a human being, it's totally different. So I feel like man, that definitely helped me out. You took a massive step in year two. How does Rashawn Evans take another massive step mm. at linebacker for the Titans in year three? Um, I would just say continue to do what I've been doing, man. Just making sure that I critique maybe little tedious things to uh, maybe get to that next level. You know, Vray's always talks about being going from good to great, and you know, those type of things are, are what basically transitions you over to that. I, mean, I feel like once I continue to do those things and being able to do everything my coaches ask for me to do, I'll definitely be able to get that. One of the best to come out of the best conference in America, the SEC, with us. This week's Nissan Insider, Rashawn Evans, thanks for the time. Thank you. Got a question for Titans head coach Mike Vrabel? You can ask on Twitter by sending it to at Titans Radio. We pass along all of your questions to the big man each Monday night at 6 Central on the Mike Vrabel Show. So send in those questions to the coach at Titans Radio on Twitter. We are so proud to have a chance to show you something beautiful, which is located in downtown Nashville, 6th at Korean Veterans Boulevard, right across from the Music City Center. It's a Tennessee Tough mural, and it blows you away. Oh, absolutely. It's magnificent as soon as you see it. And it fits in really well with all the other murals that are in Nashville, but this one's a lot cooler. It's very special because it was done by a young man who is incredibly talented named Moby, who's been a Titans fan his whole life. So 
off season, the, the people here just, they just went through so much, you know, with the tornadoes and COVID. And there's just been just so much adversity and obstacles. The idea of Tennessee Tough um, just kind of just kind of sprouted naturally. And then the, the, really that's the genesis of, of the idea for this mural. When it's done, it's, it's going to show how we're part of the community. Man, it, it feels incredible to paint the first mural for the Titans. I mean, and to be on this scale and, and this location for the home team, for the state, you know, being from here and watching the Titans since I was a little kid, you know, I feel blessed. Originally, I had done several mock-ups that were more graphic style. After talking with the creative team and talking with Surf, he wanted me to really, you know, dig deep and do something, you know, my style. So we just had the conversation with him and said, hey, hey Moby, why don't you just, just do what you do? And so he just let it rip. And, and this is where we ended up and we couldn't be more proud. I'm known for doing a lot of realism. I like to uh, kind of mix the realism with an abstract background is coming through in this, this piece, but on a much grander scale. Public art is extremely important, you know, especially, you know, in an area like this, you know, there's, I think that uh, the Titans to, to do this and to bring some color and some, some life to the city is just, it's gonna make a big impact. When you see art in your community, um, especially the way it's been showing up in Nashville, it just brings a different type of life to the city, a different energy. When people come down and they visit, it makes the city feel like it's alive. We're going to layer in an augmented reality component to it where uh, you hold up your phone and the art's gonna come to life. The AR folks that we're working with are, are artists in themselves, so getting them with an artist like Moby uh, to make it come to life is, is, is gonna be pretty special. The hope is that, that when people drive by and they see this, they see a, a unified Tennessee. They see how we, we, we celebrate each other. They see how the Titans celebrate the community that we live in. It's been awesome working with the Titans. They're in the know when it comes to the street art, the urban life, giving me a lot of creative freedom and not staying in the realm of, you know, Nashville's stereotypical guitars and, and skylines. Tennessee Tough really just explains the resiliency of the people of Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee Tough are the people who get their hands dirty for a living, you know, and do what they have to do, um, like our first responders, um, essential workers. Tennessee Tough is, um, you know, Tennessee Tough is, is our football team. Mike, the augmented reality part of this is what makes it very unique. Titans fans, if you want to do that, head on over to titansmural.com and you too can participate in the augmented reality feature at this mural. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. I don't think you know what you're doing, but they do. So let's do that. While Mike is trying to figure out what augmented reality is, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, He's going to have the keys to the game against the Minnesota Vikings. I know those. Yeah, he can do that. For sure. <laughs> Augmented reality. Don't worry about it, Mike. He'll be fine. On the next Titans All Access, AJ is back. AJ Brown, that is. He's back on Titans All Access and as the Nissan Insider. Number 11 explains why he had no desire to be Mr. October even though it might have happened. Plus, it's time to begin a three-game homestand, and Pittsburgh is the first opponent. We'll break down the Steelers and the Titans on the next Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Going to wrap it up, and I, I got a few keys for you here to beating the Minnesota Vikings. You ready? All right, Mike, we'll hit it. Run the dang ball. You know, I like to say that. That's your favorite key. But you've got to run the ball efficiently, and what that means is Derrick Henry's got to be on point. Fullback's got to be on point. Tight end's got to be on point. Offensive line's got to be on point. 
everybody has to do their job well. Efficiency in the Titans run game is key number one. Well, now that we've gotten your favorite key of all time out of the way. Run the dang ball. <laughs> yeah, what's another key maybe? More pass rush. Uh, the Titans secondary is banged up right now. We know that. The Titans have a new look in their front seven. Some changes on defense from a year ago. They got more pressure against Jacksonville. Need to get even more pressure against Minnesota. Finish off more sacks. Help the second. All right, covered offense, covered defense. Give me one more. How about some veteran leadership to sort of get the young players ready from the start? Titans going to play a wounded animal in the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to come out throwing haymakers from the opening whistle. The Titans veteran players have to show the young guys, look, we got to match them blow for blow from the start. And if we do, we've got a chance to be 3-0. and Mike, those were very thorough keys. Thank you so much, Amy. Your validation completes me. Oh, huh. well, that's Remind you that we're on the way to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, and we want you to tune in to TennesseeTitans.com, the Titans app, our Facebook site, Titans Twitter, wherever you follow the Titans, 80 minutes before kickoff, roughly 1040 Central Time. We've got a pregame live look in, Amy Wells and myself, and uh, gives you the inactives for the day really gets you ready for the action again that's the pregame live look in tennesseetitans.com and all of our social and digital channels that's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun really enjoy that and i like being able to bring a little extra something something to game day you always do yeah that's what i'm here for for amy wells i'm mike keith thanks for joining us for titans all access and we'll see you next time <laughs>